So it's 1970, police wages are very low. The capacity to borrow is very, very challenging for police. It was very hard to get to get to loans, particularly you know personal loans. Yeah, the the guys who started off started it up uh, really had, I suppose, a challenge uh, immediately because they didn't have the funds to deliver the, the loans. It was as simple as that. And as I understand it, some of them actually contributed in those early days to to fund the, the loans that uh, that members required. You had a bunch of coppers got together and said, "Why don't we form a credit union? Why don't we try and create some benefit?" for our fellow colleagues in SAPOL. And um, I think a lot of people would have said they were mad to even do that, but they had this inspiration. The association, the club, and the credit union, the three of them came together to uh, look after the interests of the members. We often talk about um, being part of that police family, that, that, that blue family. Well, the police credit union is very much part of that. Uh, th because um, you know they, they were born out of the police association, they have an ethos of service, uh, they care about um, the community that they work and live in, um, and uh, they make things very easy for you to to access uh, finances, to invest your money, to you know have your your, your children your child's first uh, savings account. I mean these are the things that they do to keep that connection, and they do it very well. To me, it still represents the values that happened way back in the 1970s when it was first formed. And those values continue on through where there's proper value going back to the member, uh, good low-cost products, and um, members get what I regard as a far better deal than they would if they went anywhere else. You know, whenever a member presents itself to the association uh, with a potential financial difficulty, uh, the first people we um, encourage them to go and see is the police credit union. The credit union was in its much younger years then. Um, things have changed, but I knew it really cared for its members. So all my children were part of the police credit union and it was just amazing how they just drew the whole family into the organisation. Look, from a customer perspective, one stands out um, and it was a member of our Tea Tree Plaza branch um, and they were dealing with a customer from the Riverland and that customer uh, simply could not come in during the week to actually settle, uh, a, you know, undertake a sign up for a contract, personal loan contract. That staff member made, uh, went out of their way and actually organised time on Saturday afternoon to meet with that member in the car park and they actually signed uh, you know, the loan contract in the car park uh, and we successfully funded that loan. Because we understand the value of giving back the expectation that if you're going to be there and asking the community to support you, you need to support the community. And I mean, when you look at the, the financial investment uh, over $550,000 this year alone, and I think it was uh, $4.5 million over the last 13 years, that's an absolutely enormous payback to our communities. Although it's now seen perhaps by some to be a slogan, a customer experience second to none, but that's what it's been about right from the start. I think uh, one of the things that played a big part in the success was what I call stability. Uh, if you think about it, there have not been a lot of directors. It's been uh, a very stable board right through the 50 years. And even more important, uh, the CEOs that we've had uh, I, I think there's only ever been four and over 50 years that really shows stability. And we have the highest uh, brand recognition of all credit unions. Doesn't matter whether they're ten times our size. That means something and I think that at the heart of that is how we treat our members. The fact that we install the first ATM in South Australia. That in itself showed an incredible amount of courage um, and in, in many respects it was unorthodox. The stories that I hear uh, show, demonstrate the level of courage and resilience that they had to implement those unorthodox 
uh, practices that, that, are, that were not mainstream. Terrific privilege, actually, to be involved with an organisation that has been so successful in the past and the responsibility to take it forward and, and ensure its future success. Our aim is to make sure that this organisation continues to prosper, continues to serve its members. It will always serve its members as, as a central theme to everything we do. And we will do whatever it takes that's in the best interest of the membership to continue to support them.